Warning. The following contains gratuitous amounts of a certain vegetable. If you prefer not to consume such vegetables, viewer discretion is advised. Good day, everyone. Hopefully you listened to my little public service announcement and are ready to eat your veggies, as today we will be discussing the recently discovered character information. Now I do want to say from the start that I will not be showing any of it as, one, if there is anyone who wants to know about the new characters but doesn't actually want to see their abilities, hopefully this video can help them, and two, because hopefully just talking about it will allow me to escape anyone's ire. There are other videos on YouTube out there if you want to see their animations, and if you want more detailed information about their abilities, you can take a page out of Pooh Bear's book and go gorge on some honey. To quickly get her out of the way, I wanted to briefly mention Alloy, don't know the correct pronunciation of that, sorry, as it seems like a bit of a trick. I briefly joked two days ago to someone else that maybe she would be a 5-star character like the Traveler is a 5-star character, and that actually ends up being accurate. I believe Mahoyo made her a 5-star not because she is a 5-star character level, but added a star because she is from a collaboration. Her stats and skills quite literally seem like a cryo 4-star Yoimiya. So if you were thinking you were actually getting a 5-star cryo unit, I would suggest you go read her stats and abilities and determine for yourself if she is actually a 5-star. Now for the characters I actually want to talk about, Kokomi, Kujosara, and Raiden Shogun. To be frank, I am rather confused about all three for very different reasons. Starting off with Kokomi, I think one of the first things people will think of with her are I hope she isn't 5-star Barbara, or something along those lines, and personally, I would say she is exactly that, and will be absolutely fantastic. The issue with Barbara is that as an off-field healer, she doesn't do much. She can be out-healed by other 4-stars, and she provides nothing else outside of thrilling tales. For where she can actually be used, some people have found her a place in the party as your active character, because then you have good Hydra application, and as she is a healer, that leads leaves the remaining three slots to all be support DPS. So for example, you could use Beidou, who does a lot of damage and will cause Electro Charge, then use Zheng Ling, who will be able to simultaneously reverse Vaporize and Overload with Goba and her Burst due to that Electro Charge, and then finally use, say, Fischl as a battery for Beidou while doing some damage herself and still helping Zheng Ling and so on get their burst. The issue here is that Barbara herself won't be doing any damage, as her healing scales off health, but she has no way of transferring that health into damage, and that's why I say that Coco is a 5-star Barbara, as she fulfills the same role, but does have damage that scales off health, and so can actually do damage, and so is able to create a number of very strong and very safe teams. So I do think she will be a very balanced and good character, if we're just talking about her in concept. Now my confusion with her comes from the damage of her elemental skill. To quickly create a comparison, if you had 3000 attack on Ganyu, say using Bennett with both having 5 star weapons, then at level 10, Ganyu's arrow deals 230.4% and Bloom 391.68% of her attack. So combined, this would result in 18,662.4 damage. Now for Kokomi, who scales off max health, my Hu Tao has 33k health, so let's scale that down to 30,000. Kokomi's elemental skill seems to pulse AoE hydro damage once every 2 seconds, and at level 10 for 148.9% of her max HP, which means at 30k health, 44,670 damage. That is easily over double Ganyu's charge shot. And while you could reverse melt Ganyu's charge shot, you could vaporize Kokomi's skill, so have a 100% damage bonus increase instead of a 50% damage bonus increase. And on top of that would be easier to do. As Ganyu needs off-field pyro aura characters, Kokomi can use the same characters, but you can just switch off of her, so you can also use active pyro characters to apply the pyro aura. So if these numbers are what will actually make it into the game, even if they're decreased slightly, Kokomi should completely blow all the other characters out of the <clears throat> water. Now I highly doubt this. I don't think it will get nerfed. What I think is that they mistakenly moved the decimal point over and that is actually supposed to deal 14.89% of her health. Now for Kujo Sara, we start getting into the not so good confusion. From what I can see, her kit seems very straightforward. Her elemental skill is a backwards teleport, which allows her to use a charged shot to create an attack buff for the active player after a bit of a delay. Her burst seems to deal normalish 40 energy pure damage burst level damage, but also applies the same attack buff, which does not stack with the elemental skill version, and for some reason, because of this, costs 80 energy. So pretty straightforward, right? Where's the confusion? Well, first of all, the attack buff she gives is greatly inferior to Bennett's, 
and seems to only be for one character, while Bennett can give that attack buff to anyone who is currently active and is also a very strong healer. Sara doesn't really seem to do anything else. She doesn't really seem to do much damage, her skill looks very low damage, and her 80 energy cost burst seems to have modifiers around Kaching, Amber, and Jung Yun's, unless the second part of the burst hits like 10 times and doesn't really provide anything else, as the attack buff's duration is 10 seconds, and Sara's skill cooldown is also 10 seconds, so she should be able to keep it up with just her skill. So why have it on the burst for no reason and make it cost 80 energy? Her passives seem to make no sense either. The first decreases her skill cooldown by 1 second when she gives the attack buff, but it looks like she can only summon 1 feathers per skill use, and it doesn't say it pulses or anything, so this should only decrease it by 1 second. And when she can already have the attack buff up 100% if timed well, what does this do? Her second passive gives 0.012% of her ER as energy to the party when the feather thing deals damage, which at 200% energy recharge would mean giving 2.4 energy once every 9 seconds? Unless I'm somehow misunderstanding something, while her abilities and especially idle animation look very nice, she just seems lackluster. Even with her final passive, which grants electro characters 60% crit damage, which is huge, if I'm already using another Electro character, I feel like I would just use Beidou instead of Sara, as she does a ton of damage herself while decreasing the damage we take and increasing our interruption resistance. Finally, we get to Raiden Shogun. First off, her normal attack modifiers aren't great, and her charge attack modifier is actually really bad. But this is probably because she isn't meant to use her normal talent at all. Instead, she will only be doing normals and charge attacks when she summons a sword. Now, I'm mentioning the sword already simply because the whole summoning a sword thing frankly annoys me. What is the point of making her a polearm character if the only time you actually use her, she now wields a sword? Why not just make her a sword user then? Or just have her be a polearm character swinging around lightning like the final boss from Sekiro? I will tell you why. It's so that they can sell the Inazuma sword in Ayaka's banner and then the Inazuma polearm on Raiden. That's why. Personally, I would have rathered her just be one or the other, as you will just never use her as a polearm character because she would be garbage if you did so. Moving on, her skill looks rather interesting. It deals AoE electro damage in conjunction with characters hitting enemies, and looks to do a very decent amount of damage at that has a much longer duration than cooldown, which might mean using it and then forgetting about it for 25 seconds, and increases characters' bursts based on their energy cost. But one thing I'm unsure of is energy particles. If it is like Oz and generates an electro particle every proc, then she will have no energy issues and will be a great electro battery, and you will want to use it and leave it out. If it doesn't, and instead generates, say, 4 electro particles on the initial hit, then you will want to use it off cooldown. Personally, I think the later is far more likely, as part of her kit seems to be about getting her energy above 100%, which there would be no need to do if her energy generation rivaled Fischl. But all in all, a nice skill, probably not broken, but definitely good. Her burst, on the other hand, seems extremely lackluster. To start, if we look at the modifiers without the resolve damage bonus, we can see that both the burst damage itself and her normal she gains with the sword are lower than Kaching's. At level 10, Kaching's burst does about 19.5% more damage, while having half the cost and nearly half the cooldown. So even with full resolve damage bonus, Raiden's burst part will probably do less overall damage than Kaching's. Kaching's normals deal 7% more than Raiden's, which isn't exactly much of a difference, and so the resolve damage bonus should allow her to deal decently more damage than Kaching's normals. However, Kaching's charge attacks deal far more damage than her normals, and Raiden's charge attack looks pathetic by comparison. Once again at level 10, Kaching's charge attack totals at 321.81% of her attack, while Raiden's is only 242.5%, about a 33% damage difference. So assuming that Raiden's Resolve damage bonus is additive, like most other damage bonuses, Kaching charge spamming may still do more damage than Raiden's normals and charge attack in her burst, which only lasts 7 seconds with a cooldown of 20 seconds, which is enough time to use like 2 normal combos and maybe squeeze in a charge attack, while Kaching can be used for however long you want. It also gives a little energy to everyone in the party. So to me, especially with how cool her normals and charge stack are in her burst form, she on paper seems really underwhelming. Now another thing to mention are passives. She has an energy recharge passive where she will increase her electro damage bonus and burst energy generation based on how over 100% energy recharge she is. Now this may make you think, oh I should definitely go into energy recharge on my sands and so on to do more damage. But think about it just like the new artifact set. It doesn't mean specking into energy recharge will cause you to deal more damage. It just makes specking into energy recharge less harmful to your damage. 
For example, the Attack Sands gives 46.6% attack bonus, while Liara Sands gives 51.8% energy recharge, which with this passive translates to 20.72% damage bonus. So probably a damage loss, especially if the resolve damage bonus is additive and if her ascension stat is indeed electro damage bonus. Now apparently she is also going to have an additional passive. I don't really understand the validity of this, but hey, who knows? Maybe this last passive suddenly makes her way better, and she's amazing. Because at the moment, I don't really think she seems worth a spot on the team over just 4-star Electro characters. And with that, we reach the end of the video. How do you feel about these characters as they are? Do you share my opinions? Or are there things in which I am missing because if so, seriously, please do let me know. <laughs> Thank you for watching, look forward to seeing you again next time, and hope you all have a great day.